So welcome back to class. Welcome to the fifth chapter where we talk about inflation. We are in the part 5.5 where we talk about the cost of inflation. This uh, subchapter starts with the comparison between the layman's view on inflation compared to the view of some economists. It seems to be the case that layman's they judge the cost of inflation higher compared to economists. Like economists know when the inflation rate is high, also nominal wages will increase to a larger extent. So that in the end, the real wage will be constant. Economists also know that when the inflation rate is higher, the nominal interest rate is higher, so that there is no effect on the real interest rate. So all these kind of effects seems to be viewed differently by a layman compared to an economist. But what are the costs of in inflation? And here the textbook differentiates two cases, like one economy which has stable inflation rates and one economy which has higher and unstable inflation rates the costs seem to be different. Let's focus on the situation where the inflation rates are relatively high, but the inflation rates are stable over time. What are the costs of expected inflation? Cost, costs of expected inflation are relatively low, low because when we know that the inflation rate is 6%, we can adjust the nominal interest rate we can adjust the wages. Wages will increase by 6% each year. And it is also the case that, for example, rents could increase by 6% each year. So we have a solid ground to base our expectations on. And it seems to be the case that due to the fact that the inflation rates are stable, these expectations are also fulfilled. So there is no expectation error and expectation errors are to some extent costly. But what are the costs of a stable inflation rate? Here we have to talk about shoe leather costs. In case that the inflation rate is higher, also the nominal interest rate is higher. Therefore, the holdings of money will be lower. When the inflation rate is high, lower levels of money holdings. And therefore, it is the case that a private agent has to visit the bank and the ATM more often, so that in the end, the shoes deteriorate more often, and we call that shoe leather cost. Furthermore, when the inflation rate is that high, it is the case that menu cards have to be printed and adjusted more frequently. We call it the menu cost. Furthermore, when there is uh, an inflation rate, we have a larger variability of relative prices in case that the nominal prices are adjusted at, at different points in time. For example, when the milk price is the adjusted in January and it, it increases while the price of orange juice is adjusted in uh, the mid of the year, then it will be the, the case that in the first half of the year, milk is relatively more expensive compared to orange juice. So we have, a, uh, we have fluctuations in the real prices, and this can also cause confusion. In this kind of situation also, the tax system can cause some problems. Let's assume that a stock increases from 100 US dollar to 106 US dollar, so that one agent who bought this stock makes a profit of 6 US dollar, then this gain in capital would be taxed, despite the fact that in real terms, there is no gain at all. The other situation where the inflation rates are higher, this can cause a very tremendous
the situation where the inflation rates are much higher can cause more problems because when the inflation rates are higher, this goes frequently hand in hand with a higher variability of the inflation rate. So that in the one year, the inflation rate is 50%, in the next year, it's 70%, and in the subsequent year, it's only 30%. So higher inflation rates go hand in hand with a higher variability. And then, of course, this higher variability uh, leads to a redistribution between the debtor and the creditor, like a person who is saving money and a person who is borrowing money, they are not able uh, to uh, use a stable uh, situation to base their expectations on, and hence it will lead to redistributions between these two parties. Also, when the pensions payments are fixed and not adjusted to this high inflation rates, then of course also the real value of a pension will deteriorate over time. So we have talked about the cost of inflation in these two different situations. Let's also talk a little bit about the benefits of inflation. The benefit of a positive inflation rate is that adjustments of the real wage can be performed. Let's assume that due to a negative shock, the demand in one sector of the economy decreases. The real wage in the sector has to decrease by 2%. There are three options how the real wage can decrease. Option number one, we are decreasing the nominal wage by 2%. Option number two, there is an inflation rate of uh, 2% and the nominal wage is constant. And the third option is that in a situation where the inflation rate is 5%, nominal wages can even increase by 3%. And once more, the real wage would decrease by two percentage points. In which of these three situations it is, is it easier to decrease the real wage by two percentage points? In the first one, it is the case that the nominal wage will decrease. This is to some extent unacceptable for a worker or a labor union, and a lot of protests will go on. In situation number three, it is even the case that the worker gets like a higher nominal wage. The nominal wage is adjusted by three percentage points. Nevertheless, in the end, it is the case that the worker can buy two bars of chocolate less than before. But it seems to be the case that situation number three is accepted by the labor unions and the workers. So without inflation, when the prices are constant, option number one, it is the case that it's very, very hard to decrease the nominal wages. And without inflation, the real wage will be stuck on a level which is too high. And this can lead to higher unemployment. So inflation seems to grease the wheels of the labor market. So there are also some benefits of inflation. The last chapter deals with cases of hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is defined as follows. When the monthly inflation rate exceeds 50%, which is more than a 1% price increase per day. What are the consequences of the hyperinflation? We have talked about that before. Like, for example, we have talked about the menu costs. Uh, but it is a case that in this situation, of course, all these problems occur on a larger scale. For example, the menu cost. There is one quote in the textbook which says that in the German hyperinflation of the 1920s, in a restaurant, it was a case that a waiter was standing up on a table every 30 minutes to call out the new prices. So in this situation, it was not the case that a menu was printed at all. 
prices and price increases were just announced by the waiter. So this is a very extreme example of the menu cost. I would like to show you some pictures which are related to Germans' hyperinflation of the 1920s. It's a case that suddenly the kids used the banknotes as a toy. You can see it in this picture here, or also in this picture here, the kids are playing with the banknotes because the banknotes lose its value more or less completely. Previously, we said that paper money has no intrinsic value. This is an important difference between coins, which can consist out of gold, silver or copper, and paper notes. We said paper notes have no intrinsic value. But in the face of hyperinflation, it became clear that even paper money has some intrinsic value. Please have a look here. Like when you put the paper money into the oven, you at least can heat this oven. In the textbook, it is also mentioned that carrying money to the grocery store is as burdensome as carrying the groceries back home. You can see here one picture which highlights that this is indeed the case. When you go to the grocery, you also have to carry a lot of money with you in order to pay for your groceries. Like here, you can see a picture taken from the grocery store. Like four eggs, they cost 40,000 marks. One bread, 50,000 marks. The prices are very, very high. What are some other effects? The velocity of money increases tremendously. It is the case that the men who were working at the factory sites, they received their salary every day. Then, when there was a break, they were able to bring the money to their wives, which were waiting in front of the factory, and the wives directly went to the grocery shop in order to buy something for this salary. So it is the case that the velocity of money increased tremendously in the hyperinflation. Furthermore, it is the case that money is not counted anymore. Money is weighted. So money loses its function of account. We are not counting money anymore, but we are weighting it. This is also a very impressive picture. So why is it the case that hyperinflation can occur? Like it all starts with the government, not the central bank. The government has three options to finance its spending. Taxes, borrowing via issuing bonds or printing money. So also the German government had a problem. It was a case that Germany lost the First World War and it had to pay a fine to the French government. So what did the Germans do? They had a problem and they were just printing the money and afterwards they were giving this kind of money to the French government. Of course, it will be the case that in this situation inflation will pick up Afterwards, the real value of the tax revenues will decrease and the government will print more money. When the, mo when the government prints money, it is the case that this variable is affected and it will lead to an increase in prices. The velocity of money will be affected. When, uh, like some private households were entering a bar, it was a case that these households were buying two pitchers of beer, even when the second one loses the freshness. So directly, the private people ordered two pitchers of beer, because after the first pitcher uh, would uh, be finished, the prices would have increased. 
How will the owner of the bar react when the money goes from the pockets of the private household into the pockets of the bar owner? Like the owner of the bar will directly send somebody out to buy more beer. Nobody wants to hold money in this situation because the prices are increasing so fast. So the velocity of money increases. And we can also check how that affects prices. When velocity increases, prices will increase. One phenomenon which can also pop up in a phase of hyperinflation is that production decreases. When it's unprofitable to keep the supermarket open, when it's unprofitable to keep the bar open, then the shop owner or the bar owner will close down the shop and the supermarket despite the fact that there are some beers still on stock. So good supply will decrease and when good supply decreases, it will be the case that demand is larger than supply, which will give another impulse here on the goods prices and goods prices will increase even further. So a hyperinflation is a very interesting situation because it will affect like several of the variables in our quantity equation. How can a hyperinflation be stopped? Frequently, it is the case that the government is forced to introduce a new currency. Maybe even the dollar is used as the official currency, the official unit of payment. We call this phenomenon dollarization. When a new currency is introduced, it is very important that also some fiscal reforms follow. Without fiscal reforms, the underlying problem is not solved. Like the underlying problem is that the government has a government budget deficit and is forcing the central bank to print money. So fiscal reforms imply a decrease of government spending and an increase in taxes. So in the end, it is also important that the government budget has to be balanced so that the government is not forcing the central bank anymore to print more money. So the question how the hyperinflation can be stopped is very easy to answer. We have to look at the reasons why the hyperinflation occurred in the first place. We have to cure this kind of problems and then it is also possible to stop a phase of hyperinflation. Thank you very much for also watching the third part of this lecture. Have a nice day. Bye bye.